All the games in the Premiership this week are dedicated to Restarts, the charity which supports professional players suffering from serious injury, illness or hardship. Uh, it's hoping to raise £20,000 for the confidential counselling service that helps players facing mental health struggles. So we thought we'd have a chat with it all uh, with RPA Chairman Mark Lambert. Thank you very much for joining us. Yeah, no problem. Hi, guys. Hey, Mark. Cheers for coming on, buddy. Mark. Just how important is this weekend for the RPA and Restart? Yeah, it's massive, you know. Um, I mean, firstly, I'd like to thank all the players. I think um, this year has been by far our biggest year in terms of profile. And a massive part of that is the way that the players around the league have stepped up to, to support the cause. Um, it's, a really, it's a really big weekend from a fundraising point of view, but from a profile point of view mainly, um, just raising awareness for, for what the organisation does. Oh, mate, definitely. And it's one of them, isn't it, Mark? Like, you know, we, we played professional rugby for a long, long time and probably played, paid a little bit of lip, lip service to it, really, and probably not understanding the importance of, of, of mental health and, you know, that how serious the game is. So I think you guys are doing a fantastic job, so well done. But can you just give us a few examples, just so the listeners know, about um, where the work's done and kind of uh, and what kind of projects you guys have been working on. I know there's been a few documented this week that have come out with uh, Jennings, etc. but just a few kind of examples of what you've been up to. Yeah, so obviously there's the high-profile stuff, like it's been in the press this week, and, um, you know, massively proud of uh, of the guys of the RPA and the work they've done in that. Um, and there's, there's the more general support that's offered um, through our confidential counselling. So... Every RPA member um, has access to 24/7 confidential counselling um, at, at an entry level. That's um, that's just on on a phone line, but that can be face to face if someone needs it. Um, then you've got the work that the um, the PDMs, uh, the player development managers, do in clubs and the support they give the players outside of the game. Um, so a, a lot of that is is to do with kind of future careers, um, uh, but also to do with the kind of emotional support and the uncertainty of. As we all know from our own experience, contract issues, injury, all the rest of it, and and the kind of the uncertainty that can breed in players. So so that kind of support, that independent voice that can be there um, to give players advice is massive. Um, and then more generally, um, as as the RPA, we we've, we've been really pushing um, things like psychological surveys. So we're currently in the second second year of the first ever um, league wide psychological survey, looking into what the big stresses are for. Um, for players um, from kind of entering the game as an 18-year-old to getting towards the end of their career, someone like me. Um, and, you know, uh, and uh, some really interesting stuff has come out of that and is coming out of that. Obviously, we're not in a position to publish it yet, but we will we will be soon. Um, we've also done um, surveys with retired players because um, more and more, well, any player that's retiring, that's retiring now has only ever known the professional game. Um, which is great from a performance point of view and from a quality of rugby point of view, uh, but can can have its limitations for for players in terms of life perspective, understanding things outside of the, the bubble of rugby. Um, and obviously the downside of that is it can lead to, to pretty significant mental health issues and, 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 you know, the problems that can come with that. And so, so I know there was some stats that came out and it said two in every three rugby players or the guys that ret retire s like suffer with mental health problems. Just tell us what you mean or what it means when you say like men mental health, that they're, they're reaching out for help or they're down or like what kind of things? Is it money struggle? Is it, is it all of the above? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, I wouldn't go, it's, you know, it, it's not quite as severe as two out of every three are kind of suffering from something that's kind of clinically diagnosed. Though that, that two out of every three would be right from the guys who, who, you know, massively miss the game and feel like they've lost a huge part of themselves and that's something they struggle with on a daily basis right to the extreme of um, of kind of your clinical diagnosis of something really, really severe. Now, obviously, when you talk about mental health, what, the toughest thing to do when you have got things that you're holding back and, and trying to cover up is just to put your hand in the air and say, I need some help. Um, now, are you seeing changes in behaviour of boys that are more proactive in, in seeking out this? Is there something else that everyone can do to try and help players. You know, we've seen the Mark Jennings thing come out that obviously he bottled up a load of stuff over over time. Are players now more willing to to put their hands in the air and say they need help? Yeah, definitely. I think, you know, I think culturally there's been a massive change in the way we look at stuff like this. But obviously even more so in rugby. Um, traditionally a massively 
you know, masculine, hard edged sport, you know, you just, you, you don't, you don't talk about what your issues are. Um, but that's, that's changed a lot, whether it's high profile cases in the media of guys, guys talking or just general awareness through the work that the RPA has done, as I say, through, I think things like preparing for your future and planning for your finance and, uh, talking about education and what you want to be when you retire and all those sorts of things. I think that's all part of the same picture for me. Um, it's about saying you don't have to just be defined by who you are on the rugby field. Um, and that leads to conversations that can then go elsewhere. And I know from first-hand experience at Quinn's, we've run a couple of sessions um, where we've had a couple of sort of facilitators in who have spoken really openly about uh, experiences they've had, which has then opened out for boys to talk about, well, actually, on a week-to-week basis, this is what I find really hard about rugby. Um, and it might be, you know, I haven't been picked for the last four weeks and I go home and my family or my wife and my kids don't quite understand what that means. Um, and so having someone at the club that you can talk to about that is massive. Um, and I think having the confidence to sit around the dinner table, sit in the changing room, sit having a meal or playing cards together and just have a casual conversation. It doesn't always have to get heavy and, um, you know, open up about everything, um, everything that you're feeling every moment. But it's just knowing that your teammates are there. Um, you're right today, mate. Oh, you know, if you need a chat, let's grab a coffee, that sort of stuff. Um, it's, I think it's the small things on a daily basis which really kind of break down that stigma of, um, of I, I just always have to say I'm absolutely fine and there's no issues. And then obviously this weekend is restart weekend. You're looking to turn the premiership red with laces and boots and everything like that. How else can everyone else that listen to the pod get involved with it um, outside of being a player? Yes, we've got an online auction. Um, we're, we've, we've got some really great prizes donated from across the league. Um, if you go on social media, uh, visit Restart Rugby. Um, there'll be all the information there. Also, hashtag uh, Restart Weekend 2019. Um, you know, uh, get involved. I know, for example, at Quinn's, uh, we're going to be doing, um, hopefully in the, in the um, supporters bar after the game, we're going to be trying to do a live auction of, of the warm-up shirts that the players have worn. So if you're down at the stoop, come and, come and get a bit of memorabilia to raise some money. There'll be things like that going on uh, across the country. Um, obviously, as well, if you can share it on social media, talk about it on social media, or just use it as inspiration to start that conversation at your local rugby club, at your own level, with a mate at the bar, um, whatever it might be. Um, I think more broadly, like in society, if we can if, if, if we can talk about stuff and maybe use the guys that we watch at a weekend, um, you know, beating each other up, if they're open to talk about stuff, then there's no reason that everyone shouldn't be, I think. Mate, definitely. Uh, mate, a big well done to you and obviously everyone at the RPA. I know there's a, a big team um, that are putting a lot of work in uh, behind the scenes as well and, and getting behind it, so that's brilliant. Um, let's talk a little bit about rugby, eh? Because I've been vying for Quinns to make the top four and, and, and see you guys do very well this season. That's Let, a lie. No, you haven't. Have that's a not. lie. No. You don't want them to finish top four. I, I don't. I don't. You'll get I've, Joe Marler's face tattooed on your yes, horse. Of course. Of course. But, um, mate, how's it been for you? You've been injured this season a bit, haven't you? Um uh, yeah, uh, I mean, I, I'm 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 getting getting a bit old these days. Um, obviously, um, yeah, I'm still still very much still very much involved in playing at the club. But um, with the likes of Joe Lewis Boyce um, coming through, haven't had as many opportunities this year. But um, you know, time catches up with us all eventually. Yes, um, yes, it does. Been great. Been been great to be part of the squad this year. It's been a massive change for us culturally in terms of the way we. I think you see that on the pitch as, as well, the way we've played this year. Um, we've had a little blip the last couple of weeks, but I mean, generally the trend over the course of the year for Quinns has been massively positive given where we were. Um, and, you know, uh, obviously from a restart point of view, this weekend's uh, massive, but from a Quinns point of view, it's, it's a huge game this weekend. Um, you know, if we can if we can beat Saints this weekend at the Stoops, then, then we're putting ourselves in a really, really good position. Um and and that's that's the focus of the boys definitely. Um, frustrating game last weekend at Sale. Um, definitely definitely didn't deserve to win the game, but also felt that we let ourselves down in a few ways. But um, yeah, it's uh, it's it's a it's a pretty good place to be at the moment. And then just you, t- you talk about obviously you've been at the club for years and years, and one of Quincy's great things but also downfalls was the fact that they didn't change after you won the Premiership and it did become too nicey nicey. What? key differences has Paul Gustav made this year in, in changing the complete atmosphere? 
Um, well, I mean, obviously, all, all you guys be aware, guys. He's a massively charismatic guy. Um, changed the way we do we do meetings. Um, definitely changed the way we train. We know um, day after day after day the way we build into the week. Uh, even the, even our day offs changed. Um, we have a day off later in the week. So we have a very intense middle period of the week, get that day off later in the week and then one sharp session into a game. Um, so that from a kind of physical point of view um, has changed. Um, I think from a from a sort of cultural point of view and, and the way the players respond to it, I think it's just a completely different voice to what we've had. Um, and I'd throw Alex Godling in that mix as well um, as our forwards coach. He's been absolutely brilliant this year. Another huge character within the organisation absolutely loves line outs um as do all forwards coaches i think he, he was um, coaching Ealing, Ealing last year wasn't he or the year before he, he was yeah, yeah yeah so he's he's had the experience of kind of running things as well so um hugely passionate about what he does Guz is hugely passionate about what he does and he also works insanely hard well best of luck uh, thank you very much for joining us and best of luck for the this weekend both uh, on the pitch with Quinns and, and off the pitch raising that 20k uh, for restart for the confidential counselling services that help players uh, facing mental illness uh, issues yeah no worries cheers guys cheers, cheers mate cheers coming on Mark cheers mate cheers thank you clearly a cheers good lad. lad I mean you talk about that restart thing makes a massive difference, doesn't it? It's not just, it's not. This isn't just about professional rugby players. Um, that's where we're trying to raise the awareness. Mm. But you talk about any level of rugby or any bloke doing anything in in their life. Um, it, yeah, you don't have to get to the end of your tether and say, you know, I'm really struggling. You could struggle with some of the smallest things that have a, a massive knock-on effect. So, what the RPA are doing this weekend um, is phenomenal. 